All right, guys. In this video, I'm going to be talking about, well, showing you how I took the electrical cords from this drop ceiling that I had in this room, and how I tucked it into the ceiling. Um, this had a lowered ceiling in this room, dropped it about three feet, and they just had the wiring, the new electrical wiring that was ran, and they just had it running, you know, on top of that ceiling, going up to the upstairs from the basement or from the uh, panel up here. And so they just had it running all over the places. There was one cord coming from here, running all the way across to here, and then down there, and then there was a couple other ones too. And what those went to were two electrical outlets in the master bedroom upstairs. So since they had a lowered ceiling, they didn't have to worry about those electrical lines being visible. But when you take out the lowered ceilings, then you have the electrical wires in the way. So you have to tuck them up. And that's pretty much what this video is about. You can see where I'm at now. I'm still not finished, but yeah, check out the video on the steps that I had to do to fix that. All right, so I decided to drill a hole three quarter inch size through my rafter there to run my wire because I can't really get in there to run the wire behind it. There's a little space there, but it just seems like a hassle. It's a lot easier just to drill a hole here. And the only problem is I have to break the ceiling out every where there's a, I think it's 16 on center. So every 16 inches where the, the rafters are, I gotta drill a hole, which means I gotta, you know, make a hole and patch it later, which is kind of a pain in the butt. I just took the fuse panel cover off upstairs and I found out that this white one and this black one coming out of the main box, it, they're both hot. So the white one's actually not a neutral. They use it as a hot power and the black one's power too. And that's why you have some of the lights running off one and some of the lights running off the other. And they use the ground wire as the neutral. So the neutral is actually the ground wire. So that makes sense why the white ones there are neutrals from the other ones going into the ground and I guess they just tied some of the ground ones into there since neutral is kind of like a ground anyway all right so I drilled a hole in the first two beams and got my uh, cord through it my electrical cord and then I found out that some of these joists have a huge gap in them so I was able to get this uh, cord right up under there, this electrical cord right there, and then run it down to the next one. I ran it under the next one, then I'm out here where I need to be, and I could tie it into this other line here and then run it. Then I have to keep fishing it down. But a lot of these joists have gaps in them, you can kind of go around them like I did here. And then uh, I had to break what you see here, it was already cracked there, so it wasn't too hard to do. But um, I picked up this wood laugh from RMP lumber and this stuff is perfect for the to do it the old school way so I can put my plaster back in here I'm going to use struck the light which is a base uh, plaster and then I'll use some uh, uh, some other hot mud over that but yeah this is going to come out real nice Okay, and I'll fill up that hole over there with some wood lath too, and then I'll be able to uh, plaster it when I'm done running this wire. All right, just finished up the electrical. What I did was I fished the line from there to there, then ran it from there to here, and then I connected the cable from here to that one, and then I spliced it going this way, and then I ran the one that was coming from the breaker, the main one, through here going this way, had to break a lot of this because it was falling down and so I found out the black wire and the white wire from the main breaker those are both hot so what they did was use the ground as the neutral so the ground is actually the neutral that would that makes sense why they put the whites to the ground neutral because that's neutral so that's how it's run so everything is hooked up neutral white to neutral which is actually the copper one from there and the hot, I have two hot ones separated from over there and I have one running into the black and one into the white from the main power. And then I just uh, 
put a cap on them and taped them really good. I'm gonna put a lot more tape on that. It doesn't have a junction box, but I think it'll be okay as long as I cover it with a ton of tape. And uh, shove it in there and make sure. Uh, there's no insulation or anything in here, so it should be okay. Uh, and that's about it. I mean, I could put a junction box in there, but to me it's like there's no point because it's going to be in the wall. I'm not going to put it where you can see it because I should never have to touch that ever again. It's a permanent thing. And then I'm thinking whether or not to use these uh, lights, skylights or not. Because if I do use them, I have to run the electrical into the walls again, which means breaking more holes. I'm not sure if I want to do that yet, but if I don't use it, I just, I guess I'll have to disconnect it. But I don't know, I'm still thinking about it. But that's where I'm at right now. At least I have the electrical, most of it tucked away. And I can start on the walls, finishing up the walls, all the holes and stuff. make space for the new wood lath to uh, attach here and here that's why I'm cutting whatever is hanging over or broken off all right here's how to add wood lath it's pretty simple take your tape measure and measure the, the length so I'm at 15 and three quarters And take your lath, cut it down to the size, 15 and 3 quarters. Alright, now it fits nice and snug. You want to make sure you got a little bit of a gap, quarter inch to a half inch gap. And what I'm using here, I'm using drywall screws, coarse thread, inch and a quarter. These suckers right here. You can use nails, uh, the, the original stuff was nails, old school nails. Um, this wood is it's fairly easy to chip, so what I like to do is pre-drill it. So one eighth inch drill bit, and just you want to get it as close to the edge, but not, not too close. You don't want to separate it, about a quarter inch away from the edge, right in the middle. And the reason why I do this because this wood likes to split and if it's splitting chances are the lath is going to be weak in that spot and then you're going to have your ceiling having spots where it's spongy. And this eliminates that. Take the drywall screw, put it up in there. Okay. Get this in place. All right, then I could just take my screw, once I got one side up, just thread this one on a couple threads. Again, making sure that I have a nice gap for my keys to go through. The gap doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it, you want it pretty good. continue on doing that again you can use nails but I'm just using screws right now I don't have any nails on hand so I'm just using screws even the nails though I hit I had a couple nails I used the nails and I went through this and it it cracked the wood so pre-drill everything if you can uh, if you have any existing old lath that's falling down because a lot of these old laths they're gonna be the nails are gonna come out make sure you put a screw in those too or else when you go and uh, put your plaster back up on this it's gonna be spongy again I'll show you what I mean. So like right here, see how it's kind of, the wood is a little bit spongy. 
you don't want that to happen because if the, the the wood is not on there secure and tight you're going to have that movement in your plaster so make sure when you push on it there's no movement in the wood other than you know in the middle where wood does bend a little bit with pressure that's normal all right and there i have it now it's ready for some uh, structural light plaster base and then i can put my finished coat my veneer over that this is the old school method nobody really does this anymore most people would just put some sheetrock in there and then put mud over the sheetrock um, I like the fact that plaster, especially Structolite, it's lightweight and it's actually the PS, the pressure strength is a lot higher than just sheetrock and it's more uh, sound absorbent. You, know, you got better sound barrier and it's just a solid wall. I, I respect the old school way of the way they built homes back in the day. They lasted hundreds of years, so I'm gonna stick with that in this home. And so yeah. I'm going to finish off all the other little spots that need a uh, wood lath and then next I'll be doing the base plaster up on these repairs. Alright, I had to cut this pipe out foot by foot because it wouldn't fit through the wall up there. Uh, it goes to the old heating system. And it was up there, it was, it was uh, causing so much weight on that lath and plaster that it was causing it to crack all the way from where it was. So I had to remove it with the sawzall. I got a new uh, new blade here. Just a cheap saw from Hover Freight. Uh, put the lath back up. You see all the way down where I ran my electricity down here. There's wood lath everywhere. And it's ready for Structolite base plaster. All right, that's how to clean it up. Put your base plaster on. If there's any cracks or it's real loose, pull that off before you put your plaster on. I still gotta vacuum it and then I gotta put uh I bought some of this uh plaster weld by Larson. Uh there's a guy on YouTube that recommends this. I have never tried it, but I'm gonna try that one. It's a liquid lath, bonds wet plaster and cement to any structurally sound surface. I'll be using that this time. It's just paints it on, and then you apply your plaster right over that. Got one little hole I gotta fix here. And this one I still got to figure out if I want to run these lights or not in in the ceiling. If I don't want to use them then I have to get rid of this switch and the lights itself, the electrical wire and just seal up that hole. And then I have this other cable that's coming from the basement all the way up and it's really stupid the way they ran it. They ran it in one wall cavity and then they crossed over and went into another cavity. So I might have to break all this lath and plaster here to get that tucked in and then uh, then patch it. All right, quick note for anybody that, well, for the future, if, any, if I don't, if I'm not in this house or maybe I sold it to someone else or whoever needs to fix it in the future, it's good to know that the heater upstairs in the attic, it runs a gas pipe right here in the wall. And it's, I don't know about, I'd say about eight feet away from this this corner edge and it runs right into the wall here and it goes all the way up to the attic so if that ever needs repair that pipe is right there that runs the gas and you have this electrical line that goes up to the second breaker I believe from the basement.